Freezing as it applies to freeze drying. Freezing is the foundation for the freeze drying process. So having an understanding of the dynamics of freezing is very important. The freezing process occurs in three unique events. The first event is called nucleation, where an ice crystal forms and the available water starts to uh, form ice crystals. Up to a, somewhere between 3 and 19% of the available water will crystallize, but nominally about 10% of the water will actually form ice crystals during this process. Once nucleation has ended, we have an equilibrium freeze concentrate, and by removing more heat by having a cold shelf, the equilibrium freeze concentrate then starts to form ice crystals and starts to grow uh, ice crystals. Once all of the available water has frozen, we have a maximal freeze concentrate, and that maximal freeze concentrate will then uh, be reduced in temperature down below uh, the, the TG prime or glass transition temperature of the product, so we can then go into the primary drying phase. So if you look at this on a graph, typically the product will supercool to a certain temperature, and we'll show that in just a second. Uh, one of the vials will nucleate, and when it nucleates, it goes up in temperature. Then another vial will nucleate, and another vial will nucleate, and you can see here that we have vials nucleating at different temperatures and different times. And then once all of them form ice, uh, all the wa available water has crystallized, the temperature of the product can start to reduce, and then we're into the solidification of the maximal freeze concentrate. Random nucleation. Typically, when freezing uh, in a freeze dryer, the shelf temperature is ramped down to some, some temperature point, and along the way, the product temperature drops, might get down in some production environments as low as minus 14 degrees, uh, so it's actually a super cooled solution, until one of the vials nucleates. When that vial nucleates, it starts to crystallize the available water, and that's an exothermic reaction. So the temperature of that vial will go from minus 12 or 15 up towards zero degrees until it reaches the uh, freezing temperature of the equilibrium freeze concentrate. When this happens, since it's heating, it prevents the vials next to it from nucleating or it inhibits the nucleation of those. Once the, uh, the vial that crystallized or nucleated forms, for, forms a full ice crystal formation uh, or all the available water is crystallized, it begins to reduce in temperature. And as it does, then the vials next to it can nucleate and then freeze. So is this truly random, is nu nucleation truly random? Uh, I believe it's not, and I can show some information on that, is what is random is the, the initial uh, vial that nucleates. But once a vial nucleates, the ones around it can't nucleate because the temperature of the vial that's nucleating goes up and goes up and then adds heat to the vials next to it, which will prevent the nucleation from occurring. So the vials that nucleate have to fully freeze and then start to reduce in temperature before the next vials can nucleate. And that process takes either, you can see this repeat itself three or four times during uh, almost any freeze drying cycle. A couple important points to understand about freezing is only a fraction of water crystallizes during nucleation. It's commonly um, misunderstood that nucleation freezes all of the available water, but actually it does not freeze all the available water. It only freezes about 10%. Therefore, 90% of the freezing takes place after nucleation. Fast freezing, if we drop our shelf temperature extremely quickly, creates small ice crystals. The result of that is a long primary drying process because the ice crystals are smaller, the vapor has a hard time re, uh, escaping from the product, and so we get lower sublimation rates and higher product temperatures during primary drying. The lower the supercooling temperature, the smaller the ice crystal. So in production environments where there's very few nucleation sites, you could get supercooling down to minus 15 degrees, 18 degrees, minus 18 degrees or so. And when that happens uh, and there's an, a crystallization formed, it's very quick uh, to form ice crystals. And those ice crystals are, are very small. So we try to see nucleation temperatures up around minus five if possible, uh, if there is some control of it. That'll give us a larger starting uh, ice crystal structure and a better formation of ice for the primary drying process. 
A slow freezing process creates lar larger ice crystals and results in shorter primary drying times. So you get higher sublimation rates and lower product temperatures. If we have to freeze very quickly because there might be some precipitation or changes in pH due to slow freezing, then an annealing process can be used where the temperature of the product is, ri ro uh, is taken up to minus 15 or even minus 10 degrees, held for three hours, and the ice crystals are, or the ice, uh, yeah, the ice crystals are allowed to expand and grow from that point, and then create a, a more porous structure for the freeze drying process for the primary drying process. In this graph, we show some unique uh, events here. We have the shelf temperature being cooled, uh, the shelf set points in gray, the shelf actual shelf temperature is in yellow. We can see the shelf surface temperature in blue here. And the green line is the temperature of the product. The temperature of the product will reduce until there's a nucleation event and the product temperature average really flattens out while all of the nucleation and, and freezing is taking place or crystallization is taking place until all of the vials have crystallized and then the uh, maximal freeze concentrate is reduced in temperature. This red line here is a heat flow uh, measurement of that process. We can see that the heat flow begins to drop here until there's a nucleation event. And in this case, there are three nucleation events which are precipitous um, heat flux. Uh, you can see these as precipitous drops in the heat flux, or in this case, uh, it's an exothermic reaction, so it's actually increases in heat flow that occur. So we see one, two, three unique uh, nucleation events that occurred in this particular batch. In most batches, we see four, maybe five, uh, five nucleation events. Uh, but it is pretty consistent, and so you can get a good idea that this this one that nucleated last has the highest heat flow. It probably has the lowest product temperature. It has the highest heat flow, and this is going to be the vial that is going to take the longest to dry. Uh, there's a saying that the the primary drying process is only as fast as the worst frozen vial. Freezing during nucleation during random nucleation occurs from the bottom up. And so when we have when we see a typical batch, across the batch we have different ice crystal structures in all of the different vials. Again, the, the worst frozen vial is going to be the one that's going to limit our primary drying time overall. But also because of this change in heat flow, there's a change in crystal structure inside the vial that's also going to create issues uh, with the freeze drying, with the primary drying process. To overcome this, uh, there are different nucleation methods or forced nucleation methods or controlled nucleation methods. In this case, uh, Millrock Technology offers the nucleation station or freeze booster technology, which injects ice, fo ice fog and ice crystals into the chamber uh, and into the vials to promote nucleation. The way that works is in freezing, we would take the product down to minus five degrees, let it stabilize, introduce ice uh, crystals into the product, and those ice crystals will create uh, the nucleation sites and the ice formation uh, begins. Notice that this is from the top down, not the bottom up in this case. And so in, because of controlled nucleation, we can have all of the vials in the batch uh, nucleate at the same time, the same rate, and give us a very uniform structure across the batch. If we look at the product temperatures, they all nucleate at the same time, and they all freeze at the same rate. This gives us a very good uh, basis for uh, primary drying. It's important to understand that in some cases, this will enhance uh, the primary drying process but in cases where we have a small fill or a very high solid content, controlled nucleation will not uh, shorten the primary drying time. The most important thing about controlled nucleation is giving you consistency across your batch, which is, improves the quality of the product. So that's a basic uh, overview of what happens during freezing in, in a freeze dryer. Uh, if you have any questions, please give us a call here at Millrock Technology. We look forward to hearing from you.